Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. Hey, my name is Mike Moore. I'm from Big Bear Lake, California. I have uh, three Boer Bull Mastiffs. Uh, they're a South African Mastiff. I had years of uh, uh, life with uh, uh, Rottweiler Chow Dogs, and I loved the Mastiff, you know, and, and both of those Rottweilers and Chows are considered Mastiff dogs, and uh, they were getting older, and, and I looked at uh, different dogs, and, and I thought I was gonna get a Dogar Argentino, and I found it just not to fit my needs. You know, it was too, too drivey, too much drive, and. Um, but on the same page, there was a photo of a burble. And uh, I said, man, that's, that looks like a, a really good dog, you know, and I researched him for a couple of years. And um, then a, a local girl up here, she, uh, she says, I gotta show you something, you know, I got in my van. And, and I said, what's that? Hey, 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 settle down. Um, and there was a, she opened the van and there was two burbles in there and I was just in love, you know, and uh, she promised me, a, a dog, you know, later on when she bred, and um, and uh, we worked out uh, a deal, and I did some work for her, and she gave me Jade over here, and uh, I got uh, Jade, my female, locally, and then uh, about a year later, year and a half, I got Odie from uh, Karen York Hart from uh, South Africa. She's uh, uh, her family uh, founded Mizpah Borables in South Africa, and uh, he's now an authentic Mizpah. Mizpah was. Uh, Founded by uh, um, Lucas Vandenweer, he was the uh, one of the uh, people that actually traveled around South Africa looking for uh, representatives of the breed because it was being lost due to outbreeding with other other animal other dogs, uh, you know, for protection and what have you. He was uh, the number three founding member of SABT, South African Borable Association, you know, um, uh, back in the uh, 80s, about 83 or so, and. Uh, uh, after his passing, his uh, uh, daughter, Karen Yorkhart, um, she uh, reopened the kennel under uh, authentic Mizpah. Um, they kind of lost the name Mizpah to another, another breeder, but uh, that's, a, that's a long story, you know. But uh, she continues to breed uh, in the manner that her father taught her, you know, the original uh, Mizpah breed of Borable. To me, it seems that the, the Mizpah are more... Um, uh, moldable, you're more amiable, they're a, a more easy going, not as, uh, not as an aggressive type borable, they're more, uh, they handle uh, uh, odd situations better than some of the, uh, um, the borables that are being bred here in the States and in other places. Um, they, they were a, a true farm working type dog, uh, a leaner, taller, not as heavy as uh, some of the uh, ones you'll see here in the U.S. and uh, Australia, they've got some real heavy boned ones over there. So they, they had to be able to uh, um, handle uh, being, being around different people in different situations and such. Um, and it's always good for any of the borables to be socialized. All of the borables were supposed to be really good with kids and children, you know, and I think the Mizpah line, authentic Mizpah now, um, is still being bred in that manner. Um, they're not focused on uh, personal protection or maybe show ring or whatever. They're a good rounded uh, farm dog. When I got Odie, I had uh, um, hoped to breed him with a, a good registered uh, dog here in California or, or wherever, you know, somebody that would, I could get a hold of. But, uh, and, and both Jade and him were not um, fixed. And uh, she went into heat and um, I'd kept her locked up, you know, during, you know, her season and um, put her in a crate and I put her in the bedroom, you know, in a, behind a closed door and uh, uh, one day you know I went in and take a shower and I came out and they were tied and uh, you know I went and checked the uh, bedroom and the the door hinge was askew and the uh, door jam was busted and uh, the crate I don't understand the crate the, it was just open you know I, and I don't know if she squeezed it open or he pulled it open I don't know but you know, and it's a heavy duty crate, but you know, uh, accidents happen, you know, and no matter what you do. I know a lot of people will say, I've owned dogs for so many years and never had an accident. Well, sorry, I had an accident, you know, and um, I contacted the vets and stuff and they, um, they said they could do an emergency 
um, you know, spay and, and abort. And uh, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. And so we went through um, the pregnancy. And uh, looking back, you know, I could say um, I could have, it, it could have went either way, you know, because um, her, her birthing, her whelping was horrible. You know, it went, it went on for three days. Um, she nearly died. She had uh, two stillborns inside and then uh, two passed afterwards. And uh, it, was, it was no fun. And it was going on during a snowstorm. And um, I had to take her to the vet on the third day because um, I just didn't feel like she was 100%, you know. And I didn't know if she had any more inside or, or whatever. And um, the vet did an ultrasound and, and checked and she was empty. And uh, he didn't feel a need to uh, purge. You know, there's an injection that they can give to, to help purge them, you know. And he just, uh, um, since there was the two stillborns, he, um, he put her on antibiotics and uh, um, uh, stuff for her stomach, you know, for the antibiotics, you know, probiotics as well. And I ended up keeping Crusher from my litter. I sold all the other pups for, as pets, you know. Um, no registration, but just pets. Well, we, uh, you know, in the mornings, you know, we get up and, and laze around for the first couple of hours. You know, I get a coffee and the dogs, half the time, they don't even bother to go out to go potty in the morning. They just get up and they crawl up on a couch or on a dog bed and lay down and, you know, and, and wait for a while. And, you know, I'll open up the doors, you know, and in the summertime, I just leave the doors open all day long and uh, they go out as they want. And then uh, after a couple hours or so, um, I'll break out uh, some meat and uh, clean up their bowls and stuff and, and uh, you know, portion out their food and their, their meals and um, set them up. They, they eat a lot of raw meat, you know, um, chicken and beef and pork. And uh, this, morning, this morning they had a lot of red meat, you know, and they, uh, um, I gave them some chicken too, but they got a, they had enough red meat. They didn't care for the chicken, you know, and they get a little bit of kibble, um, not much. Uh, on good days, you know, um, when it gets hot, I'll take them up here, go hiking, we'll go and hang out in the creek, you know, let them cool down and, and drink the cold water or, or, you know, lounge around in the creek bed. And um, they really like it up here um, in the hillside and the hiking trails and stuff, you know. And, but we do have to watch for bicycle riders, you know. They, they get excited when they see bike riders, you know, and I got to watch for that. So I like to get them out of the, the main hiking areas where people like to ride their bikes and such. The Borobo was originally bred um, for uh, farm protection um, to uh, uh, handle uh, life in South Africa, um, protect the, uh, the family against predators. Um, you know, the wildlife of South Africa is pretty formidable, you know, and so they, um, you know, bred these, uh, these dogs with uh, what they, the, the story is that the, the bull and biter um, was the original mastiff stock um, that they started out to. And I believe that dog um, eventually became the, bo the boxer, the bull and biter. I think that was uh, um, what our boxer was uh, brought down from. All the massives, you know, very ancient, ancient breed, you know, so it's hard to say exactly who, where, you know, where they come from. Um, their their uh, um, history wasn't well documented, the borable. You know, they could have been, the bull and biters could have been bred with uh, native dogs or just more dogs that the Dutch brought over with them, you know, different, different breed types. Um, you just, uh, you just can't tell for sure, you know, it'd have to be a total DNA breakdown to f figure it out, I think. You know, I think, um, their life in Africa actually, um, prepared them for a, a great life here in, in the mountains. You know, they, uh, in Africa, they have different types of wildlife, you know, and, uh, cats and, uh, dog, different types of dogs, you know, wild dogs and what have you. And, um, you know, we have the coyotes and the bears and, and, uh, mountain lions and bobcats. And, um, I think the boar bull is well suited for mountain life. You know I mean? Um, they, they, uh, they, they, they can handle heat extremes from, you know, below freezing to over a hundred degrees. And they, they seem to, to strive, you know, or thrive in, in those environments, you know, and, uh, it doesn't, I have never seen, my dogs have never shivered in a snowstorm. They go out and play 
in rainy snowstorms and and run around in the backyard like it's uh, you know a rain day for kids you know and and they they love it they have no fear of the water um we get the thunder and lightning sometimes they kind of you know want to come run and say hey man it's, the sky's making noises you know but for the most part you know these these are a, a solid dog and i think uh um they're fit you know they're fit for mountain life jade over here she's um taking care of my my property and and chased off you know uh, uh possible burglars and thieves wildlife um has jumped my fence, you know, and uh, she's she's actually fought two coyotes, um, pretty much damaged one pretty badly, and the other one got away unhurt. But uh, and then uh, another time, she fought a bear right in the front yard, and you know climbed over the fence, and uh, she went after the bear and gave it a couple of good bites on the backside and sent it running, and uh, she came out unharmed both times, you know, and, uh, you know, if it hadn't been for her, you know, I could have walked out in the front yard and been face to face with a 400 pound black bear, you know, and, uh, or my two old dogs could have got smashed, you know, they were, you know, uh, 12 and 13 years old at the time, you know, and they couldn't handle a, an animal like that, but she knew exactly what to do. She had the instincts and, you know, she circled it and pushed it out of the way, you know, and, uh, they alert me anytime somebody's in my driveway, you know, I, I can tell if there's somebody there, if, if different type of bark, you know, and um, if there's other like coyotes and stuff, Jade makes a specific sound, you know, when there's coyotes and I know, oh, there's coyotes outside, you know, and, uh, but if there's people, they, they make a sharper bark, you know, and uh, it's a warning, get away from my place, you know, wow. and uh, they, they're good at it, man. And these dogs can hear and smell farther than any other dog I've ever owned in my life, you know, and I've owned quite a few breeds. And I mean, three, 400 yards away, somebody could be talking and, and or not talking and they'll alert me there's somebody coming. They have different dynamics in, in the hierarchy, you know, when dog may be an alpha and, you know, and you got other dogs that are beta dogs or, or just mellow dogs that don't care about it. And, um, and I think since I got Jade first, she's always kind of had a uh, an upper rung on the ladder, you know, or or maybe as a female, you know, females are more bossy than males, you know, um, but she seems to be the boss, the big boss of the R pack, and um, Odie is um, he's he's so laid back, he doesn't care about hierarchy, he doesn't care who's the boss or or who's you know the big the big cheese or whatever, and uh, well Crusher he he keeps wanting to move in, he wants to be the pack leader, he wants to get in there, and so he he pushes Odie around a little bit. And um, Jade sets them straight. She, she'll get in between them and, and make them stop, you know, if, if Crusher's pushing Odie around too much, you know. And because Odie just doesn't care, you know. Once in a great while, he'll turn and, and, and just give Crusher a look like, knock it off. And Crusher obeys. He backs off. So, you know, it is one, two, three, you know, or, or one, two, three you know, Jade, Odie, and then Crusher, you know, but, you know, Crusher's just a baby, man. He's only 19 months old, you know, and, and Odie's almost three now, and uh, he'll be at his maximum at about three, three and a half years. You know, he will be completely adult, and uh, he may get to a point where he wants to be the boss. He may change, you know. You just don't know until it happens, you know, and I try to curb crusher from climbing the ladder right now I think he's just too young to be doing that you know to his, his papa his dad you know and uh, he's uh, even though he's bigger it doesn't mean he's better <laughs> you know or, or he has the the, the know-how you know these dogs have, are, are part of my life you know here now and I mean I don't uh, I don't have anybody that I live with or, or anything like that. These, these are my kids, you know, my family. And uh, they, they take care of all my uh, companion needs most of the time, you know. I mean, I get people, we go out sometimes, but um, I'm always a lot happier to come home and hang out with my dogs, you know. Um, it does restrict some of the things, my activities, you know. I mean, when I drive down the road, I got to be real careful and watch for people, you know, uh, that they don't. Uh, get too close to the car, you know, if I go to the store, make sure the windows are upright and things like that, 
you know, but uh, those are the things you have to do when you own a dog like this, you know, this kind of large dog, you know, they're very protective of their stuff, you know, so, um, but uh, I don't know what, uh, what I do without them, you know, they're, they're my dogs. I don't know, man, I don't, I don't think I'd ever get a different breed again. Thanks for checking out my, my little family of dogs here and, and uh, our life in Big Bear. Thank you.